Hello! <laughs> Let's see what's going on here with the microphone. Is it working? Yeah, that can be very frustrating. I've done it quite a few times. Yeah, when you do lengthy ones. Mm. Yeah. It wasn't on, see? <coughs> Hello! There it is. Uh, yes. Okay. It's all good. <laughs> Alright, we're back again. Now, I, I think I'm going to call this one, talk about a 180. Does that sound fair? This one up and up the other one. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, anyway, we're going to go over old territory, but introduce new, because it really is a 180. Yeah, but the point is, you're going to uh, put a lot of stuff in there that I've added to it. Yes. Mm. And the other one is, is quite pale compared to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All, all right, so just, so just put this up and dump the other one down. Okay, all right. So uh, mm. that's what we're doing, guys. All right, moving right along. PowerPoint. Now, we all know that the Vatican, the 111th Pope, let me get this to full screen. How do I do that? F5. 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 All right. Okay, at the Vatican, the 111th Pope, Joseph Ratzinger, announces his resignation on February 11th, 2013. He being the first Pope to resign since Gregory XII on July the 4th, 1415, and uh, yeah, July 4th, that's uh, the USA. Now, Yahweh's father was born on February 11th, 1909, and that was, of course, 104 years before this date in... Um, February, just two weeks ago almost now. Now, 5.55, the Vatican was struck with lightning. So the Pope announces his resignation was around midday, and then at 5.55 p.m., the lightning strike on the spire of St. Peter's Basilica. Now, 5.55 is the Christ number. It's the how many times the word Christ is found amongst 522 verses of the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. And 522 is uh, the number for Amma, the mother. Now here's the Pope. He resigned at midday in all of his regalia. Five hours and 55 minutes later, lightning struck the Vatican. His uh, several pictures are taken by um, photographers at different instances and from different angles. A truly remarkable event as uh, noticed by a professional photographer. There's the time on the clock, 5.55 p.m. Now, the star overhead at that time is uh, YBS 0966, which means in Hebrew, lightning. Lightning struck the statue of Jesus. Now, we're, we're moving over to the other side of the world now, to the statue of Jesus in Rio. It was struck by lightning for the first time on, it's actually the 10th of February, 2008. I've got, uh, I haven't edited the 20th. It's the 10th of February, 2008. The number of days between the two dates is 1829. Nine days, counting both days, or 1828 between. Now, this uh, number is the number for the word spew or vomit. 1828, spew is found, get a load of this, it's found in Leviticus 1828, quoting, that the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you, the word spew is found in the Revelation 3.16. Quoting, So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And of course, that's Jesus speaking. Here's the lightning strike again with the star 0966 overhead. And back to the word spew, the distance in days between the lightning strike on the Rio statue, the Redeemer statue, 10th of February 2008, and then the recent strike, Monday, 11th of February 2013. Okay. 
because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Who were you referring to then, babe? Uh, going back in time, the prophecy given. What's the reference to the, uh, because ye are neither hot nor cold? Who, who are you talking to? Well, that, this, this was an event in my life privately with my second wife. Who? And um, she had uh, had me arrested for threatening to kill her, which I did. So I was quite guilty of that. The main reason for that, she had seen hundreds of miracles and yet would not publicly or even to her relatives uh, talk about it, which I was very pissed off at her. And uh, finally I said to her, basically, if you don't bloody start speaking up, I'll bloody kill you because you've got to fear him that can kill both body and soul in uh, hell, which we're all in. So on this particular occasion, uh, there was a restraint order on and um, I was given information of her uh, phone number, which was not listed, and um, I rang the number and she was surprised that I was uh, on the other end of the line. And I said that uh, an angel had given me information concerning her, which was the word warm and her name, Lucas, because her maiden name was Lucas. And uh, I said, uh, that's your phone number. And uh, when I found it, of course, it was her. So I said it was in Revelation, uh, which you've got up on the screen there, um, Revelation 3.16. And so she uh, was very delighted to think that she was mentioned as being a warm-hearted person with her name in it, Lucas. So when she looks it up, it says that uh, you are neither hot nor cold nor spew you out of your mouth because you live warm. That was basically the idea of it. And she read that and she immediately found the police uh, she said that I was a very violent man and uh, three squad cars pulled up outside the house to uh, arrest me. And when they come in, they want to know where I got the phone number from. And I said, well, <clears throat> an angel gave it to me. And uh, I reached for the phone and this guy had already been told how uh, violent a man I was. So he sort of jumped back grabbing for his gun. <clears throat> and I sort of give him a stupid look and picked up the phone and uh, dialed information and uh, said, uh, Pauline Marshall, Port Alberni, and uh, come back with the phone number. So I gave it to the policeman and he listened to it. Then I hung it up. I said, now you do it. So he done it. I'm sorry, this is an unlisted number. So he gave me another dumb look. So I grabbed the phone again, again he jumped back, thinking I was going to hit him with it. And I mm -hmm. dialed the number again. And uh, Pauline Marshall, Port Alberni. Yes, the number is 720 <clears throat> Gave it to the policeman. Him and his two buddies listened to it. Hung up again. I said, now you do it. So he done it again and come up. This number is not listed. This went on three times. <laughs> And what I was doing was dialing international. Mm, international directory assistance. Directory, which doesn't take into consideration that she may have oh, had a block on it locally. Mm. Right, and that's how I got the number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I should say I had the number before that by, um, we had this Maine Coon cat, a beautiful big white coloured cat, cameo they called it. And this young Indian lass uh, owned a white cat exactly the same as ours. Now, I had paid $1,000 for this cat and brought it in from New Brunswick and uh, flown it across Canada to pick it up. So it's quite an expensive ordeal to get this thing in those days from 1991-92. Our cat had disappeared and I went to the vet to see if someone had handed the cat in and there's what I thought was our cat sitting in the cage. So uh, the guy said, no, it's owned by this young Indian girl. And I'm sort of arguing a point because this cat was absolutely identical. I thought I'd been set up in some sort of, of uh, odd way by the police. So uh, I walked out to the computer and while the girl wasn't looking, I uh, 
put in Paul Ann's name and brought it up, and there's the phone number. So that's how I originally got the phone Because the cat had been there for uh, getting treated for something. So that's okay. how I actually first got it. Okay, so that's who you're talking to when you're... Because yeah. it's codes. Christ is back, and it's all about working out the number codes that the KJV 1611 supplies to him. He's the only one who can work it out. So there we have it. The star overhead 966 is Bezek or Lightning. The same as 965, Flash of Lightning. A flash of lightning. And it was, in fact, a trinity of lightning. Three strands of the lightning. One, two, three, right. Smack, bang, bullseye on the Vatican Spire. There's the time frame between the two lightning strikes, 10th of February 2008, Redeemer Statue in Rio until Monday 11th of February 2013. <clears throat> now on that <clears throat> date also the age of the moon and the sun's distance and then the sun sub tens number 0 0.5400 degrees 5400, 5400 in the Greek concordance is a terrific portent, a fearful sight, a frightening thing. And of course, it all is a very frightening thing. The signs are all in the heavens and that's how God speaks to a deceived mankind. But what it's also doing is it is uh, confirming the Christ who's been here since his rebirth on January 11th, 1944. He came in as the thief and he's here to judge. That's what his life has been about. He's had to live the uh, rejection, the uh, abuse, the mockery, the scoffing and experience life as a man in the glory of his flesh body and then make his judgment call and he's already done that. He has uh, judged the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not and all evil on the planet must go. So. People are aware of um, the great change that is about to come into effect, if you like. And there's pretty horrific stuff being happening because uh, evil has to be removed and doesn't usually go willingly. All right, here we go. Now, that uh, number 5400 or 5.4 years is also the difference in age between the Christ's older sister who was born 18th of August 1938 and of course reiterating 11th of January 1944 that's what the 111 is all about everybody's on about the 111th Pope they've been seeing the 111 for, for years the number well it's the rebirth date of the Christ it's all about him the Pope is uh, really insignificant compared to, except to point as uh, where, we, where we are in the timeline of uh, all of these events that lead to the appearance, if you like, of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's been here all along. However, there have been forces set against all mankind to kill you all off and to keep the knowledge away from the people that the Christ has been here all along. So his birth date, 111, it's all about the numbers. He decodes everything for a devoured mankind, and we'll learn shortly what it's all about. But in this particular instance, the numbers, 5.4 years, it's uh, meaning a frightening thing, a terrific portent, fearful sight. And uh, as his older sister, June, that's exactly what she was to her younger brother, the Christ. A terrifying thing. She was a monster. Mm. Okay, there's the Redeemer statue with that lightning strike. You'll notice the similarity in the, in the two different strikes. They look very, very similar, almost the same. What have we got here? Oh, back to the lukewarm. This is the slide explaining what Yahweh already has, uh, all about his second wife, Pauline Lucas, her lukewarmness, and the number 5513, for the word lukewarm is her telephone number in Port Alberni. And so it's she that she he has spewed out of his mouth for her dishonesty and lies. 
Now on that day of the lightning strike, from the moon position over the surface of the earth, measuring to the statue of Jesus, it measures 2,222 miles. Now his body weight is 222 pounds. It's also, 222 is the verse total for the words truth and wisdom. Each of them are found 222 times or in 222 verses. It's also a pointer to Isaiah 22, 22, quoting, And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. And 22.22 is uh, meaning to flow, a pouring rain or water. Of course, it was pouring rain when the Vatican was struck on that night. And so what is it that you open that no man can shut? And what is it you close that no man can open? Creation is based on the, first off, on the measure of the angel, which is, in this case, myself, the dimensions of my own body. But it extrapolates out into the Great Pyramid, and also into the measurements of the Earth and now into the universe itself. Hmm. Every, every atom from the speed of light right down to matter in all forms has uh, these numbers in it. But basically, it's quite a simple process when you're dealing with God. Man is so arrogant they think they can actually uh, even understand it, let alone come up with what it all means. It's, there's thousands of opinions out there. They all should keep their mouths shut because they do not have any idea what it's all about. Mm. But basically that is uh, the key of the house of David. All you've got to do is find the most royal person on the earth and you've got Christ. It's that simple, but no one's thought of it. Mm. So it's just genetics. You wouldn't expect God to come back and be a hot and pot. So obviously if he comes back as a European, then he's got to be the most royal one because that's what he is, king of kings and lord of lords. So. I am totally uh, blown away by the stupidity of all these wonderful scholars, and they think they're so smart. But those octopus are, are just slapping themselves in the back with eight tentacles. <laughs> here's, a, <clears throat> here's the position of the moon looking down to the earth. We'll move in. Here's the moon position measuring to the uh, statue, the Redeemer statue in Rio, showing 2222. Two, two, two so you've got to consider the surface of the. Uh, Earth, the moon traverses it at a very high speed. So it only occurs at that particular moment in time mm. over uh, 5, 5, 5 p.m. That's it. If it would have been one minute more, mm. that measurement would not be 2222, two, 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 so, yeah. nor would the heading. And I didn't do the heading, just I left it. Yeah. But uh, it also is something specific. Okay. Now, doing the same thing with the sun position over the surface of the Earth, measuring to Brian's rebirth location, which was 105 Rothschild Avenue in Sydney, uh, Rosebury to be precise, New South Wales, Australia. Uh, it measures 6495 nautical miles. That word in the Hebrew concordance from 6491 is redoubled. Opening of a dungeon, that is jail delivery, delivery or figuratively salvation for sin. Opening of the prison. And then here's the measurement. There it is there, 6495 nautical miles. 105 Rothschild Avenue identifies the devil in mankind, who is the keeper, if you like, or the jailer of the prison planet, the bankster, Rothschild. Rothschild. Now, talking about opening the prison gates, that leads to Isaiah 61.1. Quoting, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Jail delivery, salvation for sin, opening of the prison. Of course, it's been the prison planet. Everybody has been born into hell, you're here for the judgment, and you've been in a prison um, set upon by evil in men who have created a prison planet. It's really, it's about as simple as it gets. Uh, beginning with Rothschild at the top, but uh, 
rolling down here until you get the likes of, uh, what's his name, Alex Jones. Mm. Um, He's shoving prison planet rock in the face. Yeah, it's all about uh, the opening of the prison. So how does that come? It comes with the key to the knowledge of truth. And the truth is that the Christ has been here all along and he's the one leading us all out. Those that uh, have eyes to see and ears to hear and follow. Now the English gematria for the verse 2235. Again, I'll read it to you. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, that number 2235 in the Greek dictionary from 2228 or possibly 2229 and 1211, even now already, even now already by this time. So that verse, it's not historical. It was a historical moment in time when it was recorded. However, it's all foretelling and pointing to this time now as the Christ reveals it to you, the moment in time he reveals it and then we upload and announce and tell the world of the revelation. That's what the revelation is all about. It's been a period of time since his rebirth. Now from the sun position over the surface of the earth back to the rebirth location in Sydney and then to the moon location back to the sun, the area, you'll see it on a slide in a minute, get a load of this, the area is 6,666,000 square miles. Now that number, 6666, is the verse total for the word Lord, capital L, that's in the King James 1611 Bible only. You'll see here so number of references. You won't find this in the Catholic works because it's uh, the uh, English is the throne of David, but was handed over to the Catholic Church in 1513. At 1213. Sorry. May 15. 12, 13. Mm. And um, this is where the Pope comes in because he is the vicar of Christ up until when Christ shows up. So the 111th Pope is what it's all about, not the 112th. That was found, written in after. It was found it had been changed. The Malachi prophecy had been changed and an extra Pope had been moved in. It ends with this Pope. Hmm. Okay. There it is there on the side. You can see the green area inside the triangle. That's the area. Six. Six, six, six thousand square miles. Amazing. So it's the sun to the bottom left. The moon is actually on three countries or on the border and then two of my birthplace. Mm. Now, the new length of the three sides is uh, 10,215.4 miles. Now, the solar eclipse, January 11th, 1944, to Tugum, our present home. Yeah, the solar eclipse that occurred on, it was actually January 25th, 1944, 14 days after the rebirth of the Christ. That's the solar eclipse that announced to the world the return of the Christ. And that is Abba, the geometry of Abba, the Father. Right. The distance of uh, where that occurred, measuring to our home here in Tukum, in miles, is 7706.5. So the 7706 from 7703 means the Almighty. And the point 0.5, yes, the 5 is uh, Abba. So the distance, of course, of that solar eclipse, 25th January 1944. I'm saying all this again for people who are perhaps watching our videos for the first time. That solar eclipse occurred over um, the Indian Ocean and where it occurred, measuring back to the rebirth place of the Christ at 105 Rothschild Avenue in Rosebury, Sydney, 8,888.8 miles. Why? Because 888 
in Greek, gematria, is Jesus. It's the word Jesus in Greek, gematria. Gematria is the substitution of number values for letters of the alphabet, whether it be the English, Hebrew, Greek alphabet, Armenian alphabet, all alphabets have number equivalents. So when he said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega in the Revelation, which was a message from Jesus through his angel, Michael, who gave it to John on the Isle of Patmos, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, it was a clue that in, when he gets back, at this time now, he'd be using Greek and all things in between the Greek alphabet and their number values. So it's, it's codes that only he can uh, decode. So people trying to, you know, uh, interpret prophecy and all kind of thing, it's, it's, it's numbers, not so much the words. Not the words at all, as a matter of fact. So there we have it, the shaded area again. What else is on there? Got the distance from Turgum to where I was born. So yes. From this location to where I was oh, born yeah. is uh, 973 kilometres. That's how many times the word Jesus is found in 942 verses. And that solar eclipse that we're talking about, the last one that occurred, was uh, measured 942 miles That's from right. your, your place of birth, right? Yes. Okay, so it's all about Jesus. Jesus, 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 and Jesus. It's Jesus. too complex for the average mind to comprehend as if it could be, and that's why it's got to be regarded by anyone who is remotely intelligent as being miracles and miracles and miracles that no human mind collectively in the entire earth can figure out. Mm. Like finding needles in haystacks and only he can do it. These are the things that he opens that no man can chart and vice versa. Okay, from the sun position over the surface, oh, that's reiterating 6495. Again, jail delivery, salvation for sin, opening of the prison. There's only one point in time is the Christ appointed to appear. The 4,500-year-old Hindi prophecy predicted that he would come. He'd be Jehovah or Yahweh, God in the flesh. But first of all, he died on the cross for the redemption of your soul. Be scourged, pierced and crowned with thorns. So that was historical. That happened. It was fulfilled. Then the Jews that are not the Jews, these are the ones, the Jews that call themselves Jews and are not of today, they are in fact Khazar Mongols. Even if some were genetically Jews, they at that time were not Jews either. They were Edomians who gathered as Pharisee and Sadducee, perverting the scriptures to prevent the Christ and cause the crucifixion. So it's all about preventing, preventing then and preventing now in his return. Now the Catholic Church of Rome has been an abomination sprinkled with righteousness a Gentile nation of warring murderers that allowed the non-Jews, that's the Jews who call themselves Jews and were not, to dominate the holy city of Jerusalem. All they wanted was domination and money. Now Jesus was an Essene. He was an Essene then and he is an Essene today. The Essenes had possession of the Ark of the Covenant. It was in the hands of the last king of Jerusalem, Israel until the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar marched on Jerusalem. He laid siege surrounding Jerusalem with a wall preventing any food entering the city. Of course, the Ark of the Covenant had been protected all along by Jeremiah. And so during all of this period of time when the siege is happening and uh, dreadful things are going on, Jeremiah uh, has hidden the Ark of the Covenant in what is known as Jeremiah's Grotto. And it was discovered by Ron White on January the 6th, 1982 at 2 p.m. He found it right below the cross, the site of where the cross is, 20 feet below, underneath Jeremiah's Grotto. When the earthquake occurred after the Spirit of the Lord had departed from him, the blood, of course, that had uh, spewed from his side, the blood and the water, washed with the water coming from a thunderstorm, the blood down through a 20-foot fissure, the earthquake split the rock and it flowed onto the stone that had been broken with the earthquake to expose the Ark of the Covenant inside. 
and the blood flowed onto the mercy seat. Ron White, when he discovered it, he, he said what he saw was brown stuff. He scraped it with the lid of the Coca-Cola tin, took it to an Israeli laboratory, stayed with it while it was all tested, and it was found to be living blood with 23 chromosomes from one human parent being Mary and just one Y chromosome missing the other 22 chromosomes that should have come from Joseph. That was the miracle. It was a natural conception in the sense that Joseph ben Jacob Israel, who was the king of Judah at the time and Mary the most royal woman, he obeyed the angel Gabriel who appeared to Joseph first and told him to go in unto his espoused wife Mary and from the seed of his loins, which is reiterating the promise to David that from the seed of his loins would be the throne, an everlasting throne, the kingdom of peace. It's all about the Christ bloodline. So he provided the seed. The miracle was that God held back all the other chromosomes from Joseph to supply just the one Y chromosome, which of course is the alpha male chromosome. It's the male chromosome. And Mary uh, supplied all of the physical characteristics for him. So that's the miracle. But it was a natural conception. The siege lasted three years until finally the last king of Judah, Israel, Zedekiah, was captured. His four sons were killed before his own eyes and he was taken to Babylon blinded and died in prison. Zedekiah had two daughters, ignored by the king of Babylon. Since he was a Chaldee, his belief was royalty could not descend through the daughters. He was unaware the line of royalty could descend by the daughters of Judah. The king of Judah had offended the Pharisee priesthood. They stirred up the Babylonian king. To, it was, so it was the Pharisee priesthood that stirred up the Babylonian king to take Jerusalem. Now, what was the young king's crime? He had built altars to his god, Yahweh, and established groves around the altars known in pre-Bible alterations as Asherah poles. In fact, all of Palestine worshipped the father and mother god and goddess, which is what the godhead is, the conversation in the beginning, we will make man and woman in our image, was a conversation between the father and the mother. The mother came from the side of the father as in the parable of the creation of Adam and Eve. That's how it was in the beginning, in the, in the realm of the spirit. So all souls come from the mother. Now, the Edomian Pharisee out of Babylon descent were diabolically opposed to the Essene of Judah royal descent and were attempting to rid Palestine of the Asherah, the female mother. I want you to reflect, all of you out there, the damage that that has done. Think of the oppression, the suppression of um, women down through the ages as patriarchal societies and religions have sought to abuse them and treat them worse than animals because they have adopted God the Father only and so it uh, appeals to their male ego to dominate and slay the female. That's why Jesus always preferred the company of females Evil comes through men. Adam was actually responsible for the fall. And uh, so this is the overturning where women spearhead the restoration of all things and will be <laughs> running the government of the kingdom of God. Now the following verses where you will find the name Asherah changed through groves is as follows. There's, there's 24 of them listed there. All make reference to Asherah. In Jeremiah, the grandfather Zedekiah, who influenced the building of the altars, to Yahweh and Asherah, quoting from Jeremiah 17, 2. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. 
2 Chronicles 34, 17, and when he had broken down the altars of the Father Yahweh and the Asherah trees of your mother and had beaten the graven images into powder and cut down all the idols throughout all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. The Asherah and Yahweh idols were throughout all of Israel. And uh, this was an eight-year-old king that did all this, so who was he being influenced by? It's Josiah, who was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem one and thirty years. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of David his father, and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David his father, and in the twelfth year he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves, <clears throat> and the carved images, and the molten images. And they break down the altars of Baalim in his presence, and the images that were on high above them. He cut down, and the groves, and the carved images, and the molten images, he break in pieces, and made dust of them, and strode it upon the graves of them that had sacrificed to them. And he burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars, and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. So, has it improved? No, but they're talking about an eight-year-old boy doing this. It's bullshit. Yes, I know. Well, it was all the Pharisee priests out of Babylon taking mm, him, yeah. him to do it. And, and, but what I'm saying, has it improved the lot Wonderful. of the nation? Yeah, <laughs> totally. Oh. Oh. Now, out of Babylon came the Mishnah, the Talmud abomination, condemned by Brian when he walked the earth as Jesus. This had been man adopted by the Pharisee Jews who manipulated Rome to destroy the temple. Why? It had been rebuilt. It was the rebuilt temple to Yahweh. It was financed by the Persians, then destroyed by Rome in 70 AD, April 3rd, the date of the cross. Ever since, these false Jews have dominated all of the Western world. They have achieved recognition as Israel being Jewish scholars. The self-appointed, chosen, Mongolian, Kazar abomination of desolation. Today we see world leaders joined with the Jews who have established themselves in virtually all Western nations. In the USA, the skull and bones devil worshipping presidents have Jews in all high ranking positions. The American Bible Belt supports Israel, even though not one leader of it has acted humanely to any Palestinian. George Bush Sr. married Barbara, and she is the daughter of Alastair Crowley, he reportedly the most evil man ever to have lived. Her son, George Walker Bush, has a bonesman name, temporary, while Obama, his bonesman name is Undertaker. Now, in America, by the time a child reaches two years of age, the babies had about 25 vaccinations. Now, listening to some reports that we have during the week, babies born after 2000, the year 2000, within the USA, and a lot of parts of the world, are not expected to outlive their parents. Why? Chemtrails, continually, crisscrosses the world's skies. And these have been going on. It all started in 1920 when the first patent was granted for chemtrails, the production of chemtrails. Now, based on the premise that the earth is heating up, dispensing every conceivable substance from bacteria to aluminium powder that remains in the atmosphere for 12 months, but in reality much longer, the aluminium particles reflect the ultraviolet light, reducing vitamin D absorption. While, well, what, what the way it actually works is it, it stops the sunlight getting through. So the sun is the one that causes the production of vitamin C, vitamin D within your body. You can lie out in the sun here in Australia, fortunately, for 20 minutes at midday, and your body will have made between 10 and 15,000 units of vitamin D because of the sun. So if there's no sunshine, your body cannot make vitamin D. And that's all while the water catchment areas for drinking water collect these positively charged particles for all the world to drink. In the United Kingdom, the entire coal mines of the nation, on the basis of the closure, was to prevent pollution, touted as being the main contributor to global warming. 
when it is natural raising CO2, which plants pro pro producing oxygen thrive. Plants love carbon dioxide. As a matter of fact, you need carbon dioxide more than you need oxygen. You know when you're going into an asthmatic wheeze or you're hyperventilating, you're out of breath and the contraction, you need carbon dioxide. The worst thing you can do is to try to get, <laughs> you need to get a brown paper bag, put it over your mouth, calm down and breathe in the carbon dioxide that you're exhaling upon your breath and you will find yourself calm right down. Your body needs the carbon dioxide. That's what the bicarb soda produces when you take it. It produces carbon dioxide within the stomach and that relaxes all of your muscle systems and it goes in to take with it the oxygen needed into cell delivery. So carbon dioxide is really necessary. So is it you know, for us to survive. Um, it's also anti-inflammatory, so get, just go and do some research on it, but that's, that's what it's all about. Now getting to the Queen of Thieves, she's the major hair sh shareholder in uh, BP, uh, Dutch Shell, Rio Tinto zinc mining and gold mining, and everything else that they're into, ICI chemicals as well as MasterCard banks, you know the routine. Do some research on ICI chemicals and see where it leads. Talk about an abomination of desolation. Now, experts say that the energy requirements of the British Isles was never in need of nuclear power. And the reason is the establishment areas across the UK that are designed to break down, reach meltdown. She has given her a okay, cake. Hear this. Nothing that comes out of the mouth of any politician within the United Kingdom does not come with the blessing of the Queen of Thieves. She is the top of the heap. She is the Pharaoh. No law is passed. No, nothing is enacted without her signature. No, they call them the uh, passing mouth. So who's the passing mouth right now? What's his name? The, the Cameron. Cameron. Yeah. He's a passing mouth for Elizabeth, the Queen of Thieves. No wonder she is called the whore riding the corporate beast. Now she's given the okay to build nuclear power plants across Britain. How long is Britain? 599 miles, 0.5 miles between north and south. And she's given the okay for 10 nuclear power plants that will cause the devastation of a Chernobyl a zillion times over should there be any catastrophe. Chernobyl itself was actually steam related, not nuclear waste meltdown, it was steam related through maintenance that wasn't carried out by the idiots that thought they'd just miss, miss the little maintenance that they were supposed to be doing and uh, the steam caused the lid to blow off the reactor and, and that's what that was all about. To date, 500,000 people have died as a result of Chernobyl. It has decimated the countryside. And what Lizzie is uh, wanting to build throughout Europe, well, the, the United Kingdom, uh, nuclear power plants that are uh, a hundredfold more powerful than Chernobyl. It's uh, little to do with... She actually has major shareholding in um, the energy that runs the electricity for all of the United Kingdom and how many people have died of uh, freezing cold. They can't pay their electricity bills f through the last few winters. It's because of Elizabeth. Elizabeth, the Queen of Thieves, the great whore, riding the corporate beast. It's disgusting. All right, okay. Now, what, what's it all about? Well, you remember, was it last year? or No, yeah, it was last year. February, that's right, because it had to do with her, uh, and um, the death of her father and 60 years on the throne and all the rest of it. When, what's his name, the other actor in all of this, uh, the old dude from the USA, La Roche. Remember, he oh, came out yeah, and announced that the, 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 the Queen of England has announced that five billion people have to be got rid of immediately. She wanted a nuclear 
Do you want a nuclear war started? A thermal, in, a thermal nuclear war to get rid of the five billion excess people on the earth. Apparently, the British royal family goes through sometimes twice a year the, the drill to evacuate them in the event of a nuclear holocaust that would be caused by her to get them to their safe haven, whatever island it is, or bunkers, or, or, or whatever it is, twice a year. Hmm? Australia. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, under, under Canberra, the Parliament House, mm -hmm. the money that was spent uh, building there, two Asia agents told a friend of mine that uh, there's uh, enough computers because of the Olympic Games in the year 2000 mm. that the money of the Australians paid for the complete revamping yes. of all the computers and the building of the Parliament House, and that can mm. control the world from that under particular this. location yeah. in Canberra. And then that fellow that... Um, from Pakapanyol said that there's nine underground bases underneath Australia mm -hmm. called Project Nine. All right, so oh, and we hear that uh, Obama's going to be in Australia again in March. Hello, around the 22nd, do we think? Three, two, three, two, two. All right, so where is it all leading? The only conclusion is uh, that she's setting up for a detonation so immense that the fallout will destroy Europe. And then Europe, being the nations of Israel, it's, uh, yeah, albeit unaware that they are, will hate the whore, the queen. Now, the verse number leading to this means to spit upon. Russian Orthodox perform a spitting at a christening. <laughs> After the christening, they walk out into the street to spit upon the devil and in so doing protect the baby. So I suggest any of you uh, getting close enough to Lizzie, if she's <laughs> still around, to spit upon the devil. <laughs> and of course, she's enabled by her uh, by, by Rothschild family, her banker. So anyway, Revelation seventeen sixteen, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. This is Elizabeth and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So it's all pointing to the UK. 1716 means to spit at or on, spit upon. Blessed are they who spit upon the whore, Elizabeth II. <laughs> Another beatitude. <laughs> Now, Fukushima was built by Rockefeller Own Corporation. It's speculated to have been built in an area described as the most dangerous area possible. Oh, America used harp and a nuclear device dropped into the ocean off the coast of Japan, exploding thousands of metres under sea, creating the tsunami. At the same time, cameras installed in the reactor buildings were actually nukes. They were nukes hidden, put there by Israeli, you know, the drill, security companies. It was all... <coughs> And that's what blew up the reactors. It was bombs, nukes planted inside uh, through Israel, releasing the most deadly poison, pl plutonium. The ra radiation carried to the Americas on prevailing winds. Now, isn't there an action by Japanese people suing the government? Did yeah, the uh, yes. president of Fukushima is suing the Japanese yeah. government. Yes, yeah. Well, they should. Mm -hmm. should now, be, it should be a capital offence. Across the USA and of equal size on the other side of the earth, Australia, each, in each nation there's over a million square miles of gas drilling known as fracking. Of course, it's all planned to detonate as air bombs causing a concussion throughout the earth. The Madrid fault line running along the Mississippi was the target for the oil <clears throat> released from the 22,000 feet deep oil reserve destroying the Gulf of Mexico back in 2010. Now, the solar eclipse that happened in that year was uh, July the 7th, revealed, July 11th, wasn't no. it? Revealed the culprit. It um, was Elizabeth, the measurement of where it occurred was 166.5 West. 1665 is Elizabeth in the Greek concordance, and it's a reference to Luke 140, reading, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. Greek dictionary, 1665, Elizabeth. At the same time of the Deep Horizon oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico, Las Palmas in the Canary Islands 
One trillion tons of extinct volcano is slipping on a fracture eight meters in the last 40 years. The gas air bomb swelled under the deep horizon platform, ready to burst and ignite a 50 mile wide gas bomb. The wave of Las Palmas dropping into the ocean would have devastated the east coast of America, the coast of England, France and West Africa, and right down as far as the north east coast of South America. At the time, <clears throat> you remember that uh, Brian advised the people to pray in the name of Yahweh, Jesus, and Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. Now, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall is the new name that was prophesied in the Revelation 3.12. Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall has an English dramatria of 312. So the clue is in the verse, uh, <clears throat> chapter and verse number 3.12. And the verse itself, go and read it, the verse itself, the English Gematria total is 2,520. When you multiply that by 10, it gave the age that Yahweh was, uh, Brian was when he turned 69 on January the 11th, 2013, so it's only last month, 69 Gregorian or 70 Hebrew years in days, 25 200. Here's the measurement <clears throat> from Las Palmas. It measures 6702 over to where the oil rig was uh, that what, what, uh, you know, in the Gulf of Mexico there. And the number means to blaze, to burn. There it is there. So the plot failed off the coast of Las Palmas. Seismologists reported the seabed had begun to erupt small sea volcanoes, releasing the pressure, uh, estimated to be around 7,000 of them. Meanwhile, the leading edges crashing together along the Mississippi-Madrid fault line was also hit with about 7,000 quakes, crumbling the leading edges of the eastern and western plates, defusing the fault line and any chance of a major quake. If they're all crumbled and they're just like, like, like pebbles and crushed rock, then there's no solid... Um, shelf to smash into each other and well, one plate slides under the other. That's what happens. Yeah. And oh yes, okay. Just quickly. quickly. Yeah. But if they're all destroyed by being crushed, yeah. can't happen. Yeah. Now, what have we got? We've got the CIA underground tunnels, several hundred miles long. This is what year was this? Twenty ten as well, was mm -hmm. it? Or? 2011. 2011. 2011, 2011. that's right. Now, um, you remember when the, the doors of the tunnels were slammed shut and the air pressure built up to 19.7 atmospheres or 286 pounds per square inch. Then once the air had spread along the fault lines, the doors blew out and the depressurization caused everything unable to depressurize, to blow apart, destroying everything stored by the CIA. Well, God did it. Brian did it. It's... Um, it's called being ground to dust, another prophecy. Now, <laughs> we've got um, moving to recent events of the asteroid that was reportedly coming in. And, okay, the USA had installed a booster rocket on an incoming asteroid that was below the 22,200-mile communication satellites. This also failed... The asteroid blew apart over Russia just hours before, injuring hundreds of people in the sonic boom, yet no deaths. The planned Earth impact of the giant asteroid narrowly missed the Earth. What are the odds that this sudden appearance would upstage the near miss of... So it was a, a meteorite was part of the asteroid that they were trying to... It's a two separate events. One yeah. was um, unexpected yeah. totally. And yes, and upstaged the, the one that... It upstaged the other thing. And of course, there's no doubt in the world... Like the um, moon from Mars that they had directed towards the Earth mm. from 2003, we've seen it when it first arrived in the orbit of the Earth and uh, it was pushed out into outer space. Yeah. So it was very, very close to the Earth. That wasn't uh, mentioned either, but no. the uh, moons July. of Mars have, of course, vanished. 2010 when we saw that. Mm. Mm. Okay, so what have we got? Four days before the meteorite explodes above Russia, You've got the 11th of February, Joseph Ratson announces his retirement. 
followed by the 5.55 p.m. the lightning strike hitting the Vatican. Now the Malachi prophecy of the 111th and final Pope, the Russian explosion was in UTC. It was 9.22 Russian time, but it was 3.22 UTC. So the distance in time, UTC, between the two events was 82 hours and 27 minutes, or 4,947 minutes. 4947 from 8259 in Hebrew is to lean out of a window by implication, peep or gaze, passively, be a spectacle, appear, look down, forth, out. And so you've got the lightning strike and, and the meteorite, a lot of people. So oh. those old windows that cause the damage. That's right. The, uh, they're, they're shattered. Shattered the um, asteroid coming in. And 3 right, 322 UTC time, of course, is skull and bones. Yeah. Now, uh, 82, the, the, the distance in time of the 82 hours and 27 minutes is 82.45 hours between the events. And 82.45 is to watch, sleepless, hasten, and to look out for. Now, this is the 180 coming, uh, you know, taking a close look at Benedict the Sixteenth or Joseph Ratzinger, who's a, a German. He's against homosexuality, same-sex marriages, euthanasia, and abortion. So he stood for the same principles as Jesus, of course, Brian. Now it looks like he's well going back over. Absolutely, he's set up by the Jews to be caught in a trap. In other words, to be held accountable for not so-called for not dealing with the immoral atrocities committed by the evil men and women amongst the priesthood and nuns all down through the centuries, if you like. The truth is, before he became pope, he was a zealot for bringing to justice those who were guilty of the perversion that made him sick, and determined to rid the church of the filth he learned of. He, um, what I read today was he was the one that had got to learn more than any other pope of the perversion that was within the church and it made him absolutely sick. And he was the one that suggested that uh, a department that he would head up would be the one to investigate and prosecute and, and remove these offenders from within the church. He was absolutely beside himself. But that was stopped by John Paul II. Yeah, he was, uh, he was uh, very close to John Paul II. And uh, a lot of what he tried to do was stopped by the men around him and John Paul II. And then, of course, uh, when he became Pope, he opened a, a famous case that uh, I'll read about in a minute. Now, Pope Rasinger's full name is Joseph Aloysius Ratzinger. The English Yamashira of uh, 73, 121, and 118, added all together, is 312. The same as Brian Lenigo Lightning Marshall, 312. How's that for a 180? Now, do as I did, everybody. Go and uh, search out the letters that he's written. What you find is a man who has been totally misrepresented, I believe, just like Hitler was, um, in, in the world of, uh, um, I, would say, I would say, Christian world. Uh, if you read what he writes, then you know that he was a man, a humble, humble man. He didn't want the job of being Pope. He, he actually tried to resign three times before while he was just a cardinal. He was already 75 years old. He was already old at that point. He wanted out so he could devote it to writing and, and, and prayer. Um, and he actually prayed to God that he would not get the job of Pope. And then once he, he got in there, then... Uh, he, he, he's been opposing the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not and has burned himself out doing it, plus coping with all of the exposure of the abuse that's gone on that he has been apologising for, writing countless letters all to all nations, to, to the victims, to the parents of the victims, upbraiding the perpetrators to his priests, to everybody concerned, trying to, well, his determination was to rid the church of the filth that uh, those that have, anyway, it's all there on his side. Okay, um, so bottom line is he's a saint.
Yeah, he looks like a demon because he's old and he's sick. <laughs> but if you go back in the early years of his papacy, you can see his clear blue eyes. And uh, lately he's been looking really, really haggard because he, he is. He's sick. He had a stroke before he, uh, before he became pope. They kept it all quiet. And apparently he's lost the sign in his left eye. Mm, so many months of that filth that takes. To oh yeah, the yeah. He's when you read the letters, and he's he is destroyed by what he has discovered, and he's he is a man humble, humble, and it was all for Jesus. Everything that he did was for Jesus and turning people to Jesus and bringing peace to the world. He didn't want war at all. He went set about bringing stop the warring factions. And yeah, he. Um, I'll read. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll read. Anyway, so he's a saint. And Yahweh, we both do approve of his life's work. Yahweh himself was reborn into a Catholic family, and why he was um, born into the church started by St. Peter. It's all, um, and, and Brian himself experienced the corruption of the church and the viciousness of uh, the brothers and some of the nuns and that kind of thing. So, not from this man, though. Okay, so the Catholic church is the custodian of the throne of Christ. Therefore, it cannot be the whore. It has to be the genetic line of Israel and the throne of David. So it's England, and it, the present abomination, the whore, sits upon it. So it's Elizabeth. She is not an Israelite at all. She is a descendant of the Khazar. I'll read to you a little, uh, one instance. But this is before and then after he became Pope on child molestation within the church. Now, one of the cases that Ratzinger pursued involved Father Maciel, Maciel de Galado, a Mexican priest and founder of the Legion of Christ, who had been accused repeatedly of sexual abuse. Biographer Andrea Tornielli suggested that Cardinal Ratzinger had wanted to take action against Maciel, Maciel, de Galado, but that John Paul II and other high-ranking officials, including several cardinals and notably the Pope's influential secretary, Stanislaw Dwitsitz, prevented him from doing so. According to Jason Berry, Angelo Sardano pressured Cardinal Ratzinger, who was operating, this is a quote that... Um, uh, this Angelo must have made, operating on the assumption that the charges were not justified, to halt the proceedings against Maciel in 1999. When Maciel was honoured by the Pope, so that was John Paul II, in 2004, new accusers came forward and Cardinal Ratzinger took it on himself to authorise an investigation of Maciel. After Ratzinger became Pope, he began proceedings against Maciel and the Legion of Christ that forced Maciel out of active service in the church. Now I've read the, um, I've read the letter that he wrote to the church in Ireland, to all of Ireland in 2010. He was appalled at, at what had been coming out of there, heartbroken and trying to, this is where he was addressing everybody. And um, uh, he, he, he was saying to all concerned that the, church, uh, you know, the errors that, that were made in, in dealing with it, trying to suppress it, that all of the, the bishops and archbishops should be cooperating with the civilian police to bring to justice the perpetrators of this. And then it's, uh, it really is, go and find it on his site at, at the Vatican there. Everything that he's written is on, on the record for the, the public to read and just you decide what kind of a heart the man has. So the Catholic Church became custodian of the throne and as such the position of the Pope as the Vicar of Christ, ruling in Christ's position until the return of the Christ. Now it was May 15th in 1213 when King John I of England swore fealty to the Pope. Ratzinger is German and Germany is one of the ancient nations of Israel. As a matter of fact, they talk about... Um, yeah, well, they also talk about the Essene community that went there in Germany. It's one of the ancient nations of Israel, therefore a legitimate Israelite sitting on the throne of the Vatican, awaiting the day when the Pope will hand over his kingship role to Christ. Pope Ratzinger made an unusual decision, changing the personal coat of arms of the Pope from a crown 
to a mitre. And that was because he felt that the mitre resembled um, the spiritual office above the, the kingly office. His first words to the people from the papal balcony after he was uh, elected during the conclave in some, at St. Peter's Square, and it was um, in Italian that he spoke, of course, but this is it in English. Whoops. He just said very simply, Dear brothers and sisters, after the great Pope John Paul II, the cardinals have elected me, a simple, humble labourer in the vineyard of the Lord. The Lord knows how to work and to act even with insufficient instruments comforts me. And above all, I entrust myself to your prayers. In the joy of the risen Lord, confident in his unfailing help, let us move forward. The Lord will help us and Mary, his most holy mother, will be on our side. Thank you. Now, just reading his thoughts on Judaism, uh, you can find this all for yourself. Main article, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth and Judaism. When Benedict ascended to the papacy, his election was welcomed by the Anti-Defamation League, who noted his great sensitivity to Jewish history and the Holocaust. However, his election received a more reserved response from the United Kingdom's chief rabbi, Jonathan Sachs, who hoped that Benedict would continue along the path of Pope John XXIII and Pope John Paul II in working to enhance relations with the Jewish people and the State of Israel. The Foreign Minister of Israel also offered more tentative praise, though the minister believed that, quote, this Pope, considering his historical experience, will be especially committed to an uncompromising fight against anti-Semitism. So you can read between the lines there what they were hoping for, uh, because anti-Semitism is a Jewish invention, just as the Holocaust was. Now, critics have accused Benedict's papacy of insensitivity toward Judaism. The two most prominent instances were the expansion of the use of the Tridentine Mass and the lifting of the excommunication on four bishops from the Society of St. Pius X. In the Good Friday service, the traditional Mass rubrics include a prayer that asks God to lift the veil so that they, meaning the Jews, may be delivered from their darkness. Well, it will never happen. Well, no. that, that. <laughs> this prayer has historically been contentious in Judaic Catholic relations, and several groups saw the restoration of the Tridentine Mass as problematic. Among those whose excommunications were lifted was Bishop Richard Williamson, an outspoken historical revisionist, sometimes interpreted as a Holocaust denier. Uh, the lifting of his excommunication led critics to charge that the Pope was condoning his historical revisionist views. Well, God condones the historical revisionist views because it's the truth. What this um, bishop had um, discovered was that there was no evidence for the Holocaust that the Jews were saying occurred. It didn't. And there's... Uh, Many out there now. It's not. It's no longer world news. The world well, is waking we know up to the deception. Of John eight forty four. The father was a murderer from the beginning. That's, that's Cain, right. and that they are always because of the Talmud. They must lie. Lie. If you ask them a direct question, they will lie. Mm. So, if you remember if the Rosenthal movie, it's bullshit. If you remember the Rosenthal interview in nineteen seventy six, he exposes it all. The great lie of the Holocaust. He laughed about it, thought it was nothing. Dresden was the real Holocaust. It was. Dresden was the real Holocaust. And then, of course, before that, in 1915, you had the Holocaust of Armenia. Armenia by the Ottoman Empire, the Young Turks, which brings us to Islam. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth and Islam. Pope Benedict's relations with Islam have been strained at times. On September 12, 2006, he delivered a lecture which touched on Islam at the University of Regensburg in Germany. The Pope had previously served as Professor of Theology at the University and his lecture was entitled Faith, 
Reason and the University, Memories and Reflections. The lecture received much attention from political and religious authorities. Many Islamic politicians and religious leaders registered their protest against what they said was an insulting mischaracterization of Islam. Although his focus was aimed towards the rationality of religious violence and its effect on the religion, Muslims were particularly offended by the following quotation from the Pope's speech. And the quote is, Show me just what Muhammad brought that was new, and there you will find things only evil and inhuman, such as his command to spread by sword the faith he preached. Now, in July 2008, the Pope travelled to Australia to attend World Youth Day in Sydney. On the 19th of July in St Mary's Cathedral, he made an apology for child sex abuse perpetrated by the clergy in Australia. September 13, 2008, at an outdoor Paris Mass attended by 250,000 people, he condemned the modern materialism. You can thank the Jews for this. The world's love of power, possessions and money as a modern day plague, comparing it to paganism. No, you should compare it to Judaism and their belief only in this world now, the material world and their love of money. That's why, as Jesus has said, money is the root of all evil. So the Pope, from Brian's perspective, reflects absolutely his judgment on child molestation, homosexuality, and Jews. He would have certainly been familiar with Mein Kampf with the words of Adolf Hitler. If the Jews were not stopped, they will reduce the world to a lifeless orb floating through the ether of space. He has taken the gag off the revisionist priest concerning the alleged Holocaust, where their opinion states there is no evidence of an event of this magnitude ever taking place. Now, the original Malachi prophecy, it was only 111 popes, ending with Pope Benedict XVI. It was, uh, this is a personal message to the Pope. On August the 31st, 1950, Mother Mary appeared to me while in the schoolyard of St. Bernard Convent in Sydney. I had overheard two older boys speaking. One said, Jesus was a Pharisee. The other saying, no, he was a Sadducee. Enraged, I ran towards them, screaming, Jesus was an Essing. Triggered perhaps by my anger, it took me back in time to the outskirts of the Essene community, later called Nazareth. I was sitting on the second step of a run-down synagogue. Joseph was inside. I was examining the worn steps and the rough timber arched leaf doors, dark brown in colour. I was interested in the rough fit, having just walked from Egypt, where the magnificent workmanship was, all I had become familiar with. I was two, four, two, four days old. Down a slight incline, Mary, my mother, walked ahead, dressed in black. She called to me, Jesus, Jesus, come. Reluctantly, I stood up and began to run to her side, to walk beside her on her left side. As I ran, I thought I was tired. We'd been walking for many days. I looked up at her, a tall, slim woman, fine features of English appearance, with olive skin slightly tanned. She said, Jesus, I have to tell you something. If the Jews find out we are Essene, they will kill us. I then turned to see Joseph, my father, who was a huge man, full bushy beard, long grey hair, pulled back. His arms were outstretched, resting on the shoulders of two much smaller men, I assume, were rabbis. He was wearing a light grey garment. Down his left side, a darker grey stripe, perhaps 100 millimetres wide, from his shoulder to the hem. Bordering this on either side are two thin strips, black then red, barely discernible from the 10 metres or so. Then the vision changed. It was evening, I was in a small stone room. The window had sticks set in the mud, two upright <coughs> and three horizontal. <laughs> the opening above my height, the breeze moved, two rough curtains. 
Mary told me they were going to see the high priest and not to follow. I watched through the door slightly open, watching them clinging to the shadow along the dusty street. I was then back in the convent schoolyard. That afternoon I was walking home. I stood near the train overpass boarding the school to the north. I looked up to heaven. God, I know you cannot be here for some reason and you must have left proof of yourself in creation. If you like, you can tell me and I will tell the world. And to Pope Benedict, the Lord Jesus Christ, Brian Lineker, Lightly Marshall, says, I cannot adequately express my appreciation for your lifetime of devotion and to all of the faithful in Jesus throughout the history of the church. These spiritually pure of mind and soul, the hierarchy, sisters and priests, whom share the burden of the cross in spirit, peace and love on behalf of my children. I am saddened by the judgment of those who stand before me as I open the holy book. Reluctant, yet must face a most difficult path in judging the world. Then remove from off the face of the earth all who offend my mother, Mary. The original Malachi prophecy only mentioned 111 popes, ending with Pope Benedict. I am sincerely grateful and bless you, Pope Benedict, for your spiritual purity and your ongoing determination to do what I myself will do as I will follow in your footsteps the work you began as vicar of the church to holy fruition. Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Well, there you go. Wonderful man. There's been others. There has. Of John Durnable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, who was it we were talking to when the Archbishop of um, Korea died, what, a couple of years ago? Where were we? Mm, that was oh, in Fiji. Yeah. Fiji, yes. The uh, Korean man. He was so upset. And all of Korea was so upset that he died. There we have it. Anything else? No. No. Mm-hmm. Later, Gators. <clears throat>